Hello everybody, this video will be on the practical investigations for the Monet effect. The magnitude and direction of the electromagnetic force between a current-current conductor and the external magnetic field can be determined using an electronic balance. The experiment is simple. We can place a current-current conductor or wire within an external magnetic field. By putting this conductor onto an electronic balance, we can use a balance reading to determine the forces that is exerted upon the current current conductor. By way of review, the force produced by the motor effect is given by ILB sine theta, where I is the current passing through the conductor, L is the length of the conductor, and B is the strength of the magnetic field. The angle theta here is the angle between the conductor and the direction of the magnetic field. If the force caused by the magnetic field is acting downwards, the mass reading as displaced by the electronic balance will increase. The force provided by the magnetic field is going upwards, the mass reading as displaced by the balance will decrease instead. The direction of the magnetic force depends on the relative directions of the current flowing through the conductor as well as the direction of the magnetic field. Specifically, the direction of the force can be determined by using the right-hand palm rule, where the thumb points in the direction of the conventional current, the four fingers are in the direction of the magnetic field, and the palm will be facing the direction of the magnetic force. So, in simpler words, by using the electronic balance, not only can we determine the direction of the force due to the motor effect, we can also use the change in mass reading to calculate the magnitude of the produced force. The extent to which the reading on the balance changes by depends on the magnitude of the force. We can analyze the relationship between force and the other variables by using the motor effect equation. By looking at the equation and focus on the variable I or current, we know that the force increases as the current size increases. And if the force increases, the extent to which the mass reading changes by will also increase. Now remember, the direction of the current is also very important to consider because if the current direction is reversed, the direction of the force will also be reversed. So that means if the reading increases in a previous scenario, the reading will decrease instead when the current direction is reversed. The angle between the conductor and the magnetic field is also quite important. Maximum force is observed when the angle between the two is perpendicular or 90 degrees. And no force will be observed when the angle is 0 degrees. So in other words, if the magnetic field is parallel to the conductor, there wouldn't be any mass reading changes observed in the balance. Furthermore, the L or length in the equation suggests that only the portion of the conductor that's within the external magnetic field is affected by the force due to the motor effect. So this means the balance reading will change more if the size or the strength of the magnetic field B increases. If the dimension of this field becomes larger, it will affect a greater portion of the conductor. If the magnetic field becomes stronger, the same thing will also occur. The relationship between the mass changes and the current passing through the conductor can be graphed as shown. We can use the graph as well as the motor effect equation to calculate various variables that's involved in the motor effect. In this graph, my y-axis is mass and my x-axis is the independent variable, which is the current that's passing through the conductor, which is resting on the balance. Now we know that the magnetic force is being measured as a weight force which is exerted upon the balance. So we can replace the force by mg, where m is the mass reading as provided by the balance, and g is the acceleration due to gravity. We can rearrange this equation to make mass over current the subject, which is also the gradient of this straight line. And the gradient here is equal to L times by B times by sine theta divided by G. Normally, if the experiment is conducted with the correct control variables, the relationship between mass and the current should be a directly proportional one, which means you will always observe a linear relationship. 
And this is because the four variables, length, the magnetic field strength, the acceleration due to gravity, and the angle between the conductor and the magnetic field are constant values. We can also use this expression to calculate any of the four variables by using the gradients shown by the graph. A very similar method using the electronic balance can be used to investigate the force between a pair of parallel current carrying conductors. The top conductor is fixed while the bottom conductor is resting on an electronic balance and is free to move. The balance reading will change depending on the magnitude and direction of the force between the two straight conductors. If the current passing through the two conductors are flowing in the opposite direction, then there will be a repulsive force created between them. And since the top conductor is fixed, this will cause the bottom conductor to experience a downward force. And that force will be also applied onto the balance, causing the reading on the balance to increase. If the current flowing through the two conductors are in the same direction, then the electromagnetic force between the two conductors will be an attractive one. So the bottom conductor will experience an upward force towards the top fixed conductor. And this will result in a decreased mass reading as displayed by the balance. We usually investigate the force between the two conductors by making the current in the top conductor constant and the bottom conductor having a variable current. That means the current passing through the bottom conductor becomes an independent variable. As current changes, what we expect to see is that the mass reading in the balance should also change. Here's an example. The current flowing through the top conductor is fixed, while the current in the lower conductor is increased from 2.8 amps all the way to 20 amps. And as you can see, the balance reading will decrease. This tells us that as the force between the two conductors is increasing, the mass reading is decreasing. So that means the two currents will be flowing in the same direction, causing the force to be attractive. And since the force is attractive, the bottom copper rod will experience an upward force towards the top conductor. As the current in the bottom conductor is increasing, the force will also become stronger, causing the mass reading to decrease even more. We can better visualize this relationship between the balance reading, which is mass, and the current in the bottom copper rod using a graph. And as you can see, again, a linear or directly proportional relationship is observed between the two variables. We can analyze this relationship by using the equation for the force between two parallel conductors. We can rearrange the equation to make mass over current as a subject, which is also the gradient of my straight line. This gradient is equal to mu naught over 2 pi times by the current in the top conductor multiplied by the length of the conductors divided by r, which is the distance between the two conductors and also acceleration due to gravity. And since all of these variables are either constant or controlled variables, the value of mass divided by i1 should be constant, which is the reason why there is this linear trend between the mass and the current in the lower rod. This concludes the video on practical investigations of the motor effect.